What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Cam ATL, and welcome back to a NBA High Five video. It has been a minute since we have been able to do this, but we have a two-game slate to start this NBA season. I've never been so happy about a two-game slate a day in my life. I am incredibly excited for this, excited to break it down, get right into it. Um, I am going to be doing a $50 giveaway on this video alone. All right, $50 giveaway on this video alone. All you have to do to enter your name to the $50 giveaway is to like the video down below, comment anything in the comment section, and subscribe to the channel. I will pick a random comment and uh, choose a winner for $50. In tomorrow's video, I'll announce the winner, all right? Um, tomorrow, we have a huge slate, y'all. So as always, it's a two-game slate, and I love it. I'm, I'm loving where I'm at so far with it. I've been looking at this slate for days now. Um, and I love where I'm at, don't get me wrong, but it's still a two-game slate. You still got to use smart bankroll management when it comes to two-game slates like this and live. make sure you live to fight another day for a huge slate tomorrow. We got a big slate tomorrow. All right, greenlightdfs.com to join the squad. We got the weekly, daily, season-long, all that on the site. Um, I am on the NBA Optimizer as we speak. The NBA Optimizer is official. It is a beautiful thing to use during the NBA season. We update it throughout the day as the day goes on. Um, and I'm just excited to get into this slate, man. It's a little two-game slate, so nothing crazy. Shouldn't be too long of a video, but I'm just really, really excited to get into this, man. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So first and foremost, let's talk about a player that really sticks out to me on this slate today, and that's going to be my boy Al Horford. Not because he played on my Hawks for years, and I love this guy plain and simple, but he's only 4'9", and he's going to get heavy minutes here, man. Robert Williams is out. Um, you know, Robert Williams has been dealing with those injuries. Um, Robert Williams is that center for Boston. Al Horford's going to take over that role, and at 4'9", he's just in a fantastic position here, okay? The matchup's not ideal against uh, Embiid, but it's just plain and simple opportunity at 4'9". Four nine. He's going to be down there balling. Um, I love Al Horford in this spot here at only 4-9. It's just too cheap in this situation. As you can see, I have him projected slightly over 29. At 5-9, that's just amazing value. That's almost 6-X. Okay, so he's a fantastic value for me. I absolutely love him. Next up, after I get Al Horford locked in, we have uh, a, we got to figure out our spend ups because you know there's a couple places we're going to be able to spend up. It's only a two game slate. You want to get the spend ups right. I think the number one focus you need to have tonight is going Joel Embiid because of Robert Williams being out and them missing their big man for Boston down low. I think Joel Embiid should have no problem dominating the boards down low, dom dominating down uh, inside plain and simple. He should be able to have his way, and he's only 9-9. For a guy who should be over 10K most of the year, he's only 9-9. He's in a fantastic spot here to just dominate down low without, uh, with Boston missing a big man, uh, a big-time big. Like Robert Williams is a very good defender down low too, so missing him is, is, a, is a big deal. Al Horford can hold his own, don't get me wrong, but Joel Embiid should be able to do whatever he wants to do down low in this matchup. I love Joel. He is the fa my favorite spend up on this slate. I believe I have him projected higher than anyone. I have LeBron very slightly higher. Let's go ahead and lock in LeBron because like I said, it's a two-game slate. You can get who you want. Now, we had the news come out yesterday that Golden State starters weren't going to play a whole normal amount of minutes. They're not ready for that conditioning yet. So I'm not interested in doing any of the spend up Golden State guys. If you want to if you want to spend down on some of the cheaper Golden State guys, maybe off the bench thinking they're going to get some decent run and they're just super cheap, then that's fine. But when it comes to starters on Golden State, I don't have a ton of interest in that. Um, but what I do have interest in is LeBron James on the other side. LeBron James... We know how much he can just handle the rock plane and he can run the point. He can pretty much do anything on the floor. On top of that, the Lakers are a little bit thin at guard. Okay, you got Russell Westbrook. We don't know if at this moment, I, I'm, I believe Russell Westbrook might come off the bench. They've been playing around with it throughout the preseason. He might, Westbrook might come off the bench. Okay, um, and if Westbrook comes off the bench, that's going to be interesting. Uh, so... With that being said, I mean, LeBron James is going to handle the Rock a good bit here. Yes, they have Patrick Beverly they brought in. Um, yes, they have Kendrick Nunn, who we're going to talk about because I think he's great value. Um, we'll get into that. But Dennis Schroeder they brought in and is out. You know what I mean? So he's not going to play. So when it comes to the guard position, Austin Reeves can play guard, but 
predominantly they're going to want him at small forward, most likely with Troy Brown Jr. already out. Um, so Austin Reeves is probably going to see more of that forward position. So when it comes to point guard, you got Russell Westbrook, who's banged up. Not sure if he's going to start or come off the bench, but either way, he's banged up. Dennis Schroeder's out. That leaves Patrick Beverly, who's already going to be starting in, in the starting lineup, whether he starts at point or shooting guard. And then Kendrick Nunn and Austin Reeves. And Austin Reeves, like I said, will probably play some small forward, most likely, majority, because they're missing Troy Brown at small forward. They do have Lonnie Walker, but we're not sure. They're, they might move him around a little bit, but I'm expecting good production out of another guy that I'm going to talk about next, actually. But LeBron James, like I said, it's a two-game slate. On two-game slates, you got to get your spend-ups right. I think you cannot go wrong here. I think this game ends up staying competitive. I think it's a solid game back and forth. It's the highest total game on this slate um, where we can't really get a ton of Golden State because they're just not going to get a huge run. Now, can Curry go out and put up 50 in 25 minutes? Of course, he could. Um, but LeBron James, at least we have that safety of him getting those minutes. And I love him as the spend up in the top total of the night. So LeBron James and Joel Embiid are my top spend ups. Al Horford's probably my favorite, one of my favorite point per dollar plays in general. Um, start, going to point guard, this is a, a a point guard that I just see so much potential in, man. And there's a couple other guys I'm going to talk about as well. But Tyrese Maxey is just so solid. Like the matchup against Boston is not ideal. I get it. But Tyrese Maxey for Philly, I mean, he just came around at, uh, last year and just had a solid year. And this year, I'd expect even more of a of a progression. At 5K, we need 25 for 5X, 30 for 6X. I think he's safe for 30. I like Tyrese Maxey. Um, he's in a solid position, once again, just based off of usage. I have him projected over 33. Tyrese Maxey in a slate where the spend-ups, as you can see, the spend-ups, in my opinion, are going to be at the forward and center spot. Because, I mean, you also got Jason Tatum in a solid spot. You're not going to spend up for Curry, most likely, unless you're making 150 lineups. James Harden, you just don't really know what you're going to get from him. You know what I mean? So at least you know what you're getting out of LeBron and Embiid. So you're spending up at the forward and center spots. That leaves you grabbing value at the guards. And Tyrese Maxey is the way to go there, in my opinion. Now, you've got Marcus Smart, who's also a solid option. They did bring in Malcolm Brogdon for Boston, so that's going to take away some from Smart. But no matter what, even with Brogdon there, I expect Marcus Smart to play his 30 minutes and play his role on Boston. Marcus Smart's a fantastic defender. They're going to continue to play him his regular role, I would imagine. Malcolm Brogdon is interesting to me at 4-9. Yes, he's coming off the bench, but there that's why I like him. Okay, Malcolm Brogdon's used to being a starter. He's going to have huge usage running with the bench players. Like his usage is going to be high. As well as that, I am expecting 25 to 30 minutes out of Brogdon off the bench as well still. So, it's it's pretty amazing as I'm even talking about this right now how solid this Boston team is. Like having a guy like Malcolm Brogdon off the bench is huge. You know what I mean? This dude is a starter on most teams. And the fact that he's coming off the bench, he's a, he's a solid option at only 4'9". He's a guy that I definitely have some interest in. It's interesting to me. All right, another guy I want to talk about because obviously guards, like cheaper guards, are going to be kind of a, a good move today. Uh, let's talk about Patrick Beverly. Patrick Beverly for the, uh, Los Angeles. He's going to be tasked with pesking Curry around. Um, with that said, he could draw foul issues, but at 4-3, Patrick Beverly is a guy who he doesn't ever put up a ton of points, but he's a rebounder, assists. He puts up in all those other categories, steals, rebounds, assists. At 4-3, he could hit value, no problem. Um, and especially at that point guard being thin for LA, like I talked about with Schroeder already out. Um, this is an interesting position for Patrick Beverly. And like I said, he's a great defender. He's a guy that they're probably going to want on the floor as much as they can just to kind of handle the, you know, the offense of Curry as long as Curry is on there. So, um, now he's not going to shut Curry down. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying, but, uh, he's a solid pesky defense defender. We all know that. And, uh, that in turn is going to lead to steals and stuff like he, it's always been in his career. He gets steals, he gets rebounds, assists. He's just a really high energy, hard effort player. And you can, you gotta love Patrick Beverly, man. I love that. I, I just love, I love the effort level. I love when guys go out there and just put everything on the line. Just like people were complaining about Patrick Beverly getting all hyped up when Minnesota um, won that playoff game or were going to the next round or whatever, and he was on the score table or whatever. That's the energy. That's the, that's the drive, the passion you want on your team. 
regardless if a guy's going to drop 50 points, that doesn't matter. You want that drive, that passion, somebody who's going to give 100,000% for his teammates every day, and that's Beverly. Let's be real. Um, all right, so the value I'm plugging in, and I'm putting him in the high five, yes, because I think getting the clutch value in this slate today is going to be the difference maker. Now, if Kendrick Nunn ends up being low-owned, I'm all over that, baby. All right, so... I talked about it previously, right? I talked about the Lakers being kind of thin at the guard position. Russell Westbrook being banged up. Dennis Schroeder already being out. Patrick Beverly's already in the starting lineup at shooting guard, I believe. But we, we'd have to see exactly how they run this offense. There's only so many people who can run point on this Laker team right now. Okay, so Kendrick Nunn, I'm expecting to get 25 minutes at least. Okay, I am expecting 25 minutes around there for Kendrick Nunn. After looking everywhere, uh, getting an idea of where his minutes are going to be, it's looking around 25 minutes or so. Even if he plays 20 minutes or so, he's only 3K. Kendrick Nunn is around a 0.8 fantasy point per minute player throughout his career. Okay. Um, in a matchup like this, coming off of the bench, I mean, if he happens to start, obviously it's a man. I mean, we we still got to kind of wait how they're going to juggle this off this uh, this team and see exactly how that lineup's going to look. I don't expect him to start. If he does, he's locked, and then the problem is he becomes uber chalky. I'm hoping that he kind of slides under the radar if he's not char uh, starting at 3K. I mean, this is big time uh, for a guy that I'm expecting to get 25 minutes. That is expected to get. A solid chunk of minutes because of the lack of ball handlers that LA has available to them. Um, I think he's fantastic value at 3K. I have him projected at 20. He is point per dollar, my favorite pay, play on the slate. He's up there, all the way up there, right above Tyrese Maxey when it comes to point per dollar. Um, I have Tyrese Maxey over 6X, and then I have Kendrick Nunn, like almost 7. So... I love Kendrick Nunn, and as you guys know on small two-game slates, uh, getting these cheap value guys to be able to really, you know, if 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 a guy like Kendrick Nunn goes out there and gets 25 minutes and gets you 18 points, that's all you needed. That's 6X right there. I have him projected over 20. Um, I love this spot here for him. It's a fantastic position for him, and that's about it, y'all. That's it. I mean, two-game slate. We're ready to go. We got Tyrese Maxey at the point guard position. Like I said, this kid made huge strides last season. I'm expecting to make even bigger jump this season. He is a solid, solid player. Um, he can put up points. He's just a, a solid player in general. Kendrick Nunn has that 3K cheap value we talked about how thin L.A. kind of is with point guards right now. Uh, Kendrick Nunn's going to get some run, no matter what, whether it's at point guard, shooting guard, he's going to get some run. I'm expecting, like I said, around 25 minutes or so, something like that. Um, and if that is, in fact, the case, I'm going to keep an eye on that, keep an eye on what coaches are saying, and keep an eye on all the news and stuff like that. If it looks like Kendrick Nunn's not going to get the minutes I'm expecting, then he won't be, obviously, as good of a play. But if he's, it's looking like he's going to remain... Um, with the minutes that I'm expecting to be, he's a focal point. LeBron James and Joel Embiid as my spend-ups. LeBron James is just LeBron James. I know he's old, but he's only 9-2 in a game that should be competitive in the highest total on the slate. And like I said, I like spending up for these guys because when it comes to spending up for point guard, I mean, what, you're, you're James Harden or Stephen Curry? Stephen Curry's, uh, they, the coach came out and made that comment of, um, if you're playing 150 lines, then you're going to have some Curry. But if you're playing one single line, the coach coming out and saying they're going to be limited a little bit because of conditioning issues, um, then that, that kind of takes him out of play for me if I'm spending that amount of money. So because of that, it, it kind of leads you to spending up at the forward and center position. And Joel Embiid, I was going to lock no matter what happened. Even if Curry was going to get full run, Joel Embiid was my guy. Robert Williams out for Boston. Joel Embiid has always been consistent in smashing Boston anyway. Now you take Robert Williams off that really good down low guy for Boston, and Joel Embiid's going to have his way. Al Horford with Robert Williams out like I just talked about. Al Horford's going to get a ton of run down there at 4'9". I just love his potential as well. I have him pretty much projected at 6x. I love Al Horford. He's one of the focal points for me as well. So it's just a fantastic slate, man. Another spend up you can consider at those forward spots is obviously uh, Jason Tatum. I got Jason Tatum projected at 47 at a 5.3 point per salary. He's about 0.3 less than LeBron. Um, I do have Draymond popping pretty decently, but again, the conditioning issues, I'll probably lower him down a little bit. Um, Anthony Davis is only 8'5". He's an interesting guy. But yeah, man, I mean, really... LeBron James and Embiid are my two favorite spend-ups. And then 
Kendrick Nunn has the 3K value to really open things up and allow the balance. And then that's about it, man. Good luck, y'all, on the first slate of the day. I will be dropping another video in the morning, obviously, for the huge slate we have. Kind of probably going to be a little bit of a longer video, but I'm going to kind of break that slate down. Thank you guys for joining me as always. Remember, $50 giveaway to one commenter down in the comment section. So comment anything in the comment section. Let's get this money tonight, baby. Greenlightdfs.com. Join the squad, and let's get it. I'm out.